Hi friends. We're going to continue our month talking about optimism. And today I want to start with a question. Where do you go when you need an extra boost of optimism? Like if you're feeling sad or crummy or down or negative or pessimistic, what do you do or where do you go or where do you look for hope? Well, I know for me that sometimes I think I just need to get away. I need to go for a long walk or a long vacation um, or even for a long conversation with a friend. Well, today we're going to read a book that shows us that good things are closer than we might think and that optimism can be found by finding those good things right where we are. Today we're going to read a book called The Last Stop on Market Street by Matt De La Pena and it's uh, illustrated by Christian Robinson and it's a fantastic book about finding the good right where you are. So as I read it, I want you to pay attention to two things. Actually, three things. I want you to pay attention to our main character and to his grandmother and pay attention to their attitudes about what is around them. Is one of them more pessimistic? Is one of them more optimistic? Does one of them have a change in attitude somewhere in the book? And I also want you to look at the illustrations. They are simple, but colorful and really fun. And I'm looking forward to the project we're going to create, create today based on this book. All right, so read along with me, The Last Stop on Market Street. The Last Stop on Market Street. Words by Matt De La Pena, pictures by Christian Robinson. CJ pushed through the church drawers, skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella, saying, How come we gotta wait for the bus in all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but he never saw a straw. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on flower petals. He watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire and old Mr. Dennis who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged, and the doors swung open. What's that I see? Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear, placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and said, Good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped, lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always got to go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. C. 
CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses, too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on and stood in back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arcing over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful, where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again, at the bus rounding the corner out of sight, and the broken street lamps still lit up bright, and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their fa familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, Me too, CJ. Now, come on. The end. Isn't that a great book? I love what happens inside of CJ in the book. How did he start out? Was he happy about walking in the rain, riding on the bus, going to the soup kitchen? At first he wasn't, right? But Nana has optimistic eyes and she helped him to see all of the beauty and good even in his everyday routine. I love this part. On this page when it says, his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. That's what an optimist does. When we have optimism, we can find beautiful even in places where other people may not think to look. 
What did he see? He found a rainbow in the middle of a part of town that may not be considered beautiful by everybody. Well, today we are going to make our own bus and I, we're going to put ourselves on it. We are going to make our own bus with perhaps somebody inside the bus with us. I drew myself, I forgot my feet here. I made myself kneeling up on my knees on the seat, looking out, and if you'll notice, I've got two pages here together. We're gonna actually cut out our windows and do a little bit of 3D action on these. Uh, we're gonna draw a background of something you might see outside of your bus window, and then we're gonna draw the foreground. That means what's in front, we're going to put ourselves inside of the bus and we're going to even do a little funky painting with markers today. So here's what you need. You need your journal. You need markers. You need scissors, pencil, glue stick, and if you can, you need a baby wipe or a, or a just barely damp piece of paper towel. If you don't have this, no big deal. We can just do it with markers and pencil. But if you do, uh, this kind of makes for a fun effect. Okay, so go gather your supplies and let's start creating together. So here's my inspiration for today's art project was this scene from the inside of the bus where we see CJ looking out of these big windows and the inside of the bus was green. Uh, you can make the inside of your bus any way that you want it. But I want you to also look at the, the illustrations of the characters in this book. They're not fancy, are they? They are simple shapes, heads are circles with circle eyes, very simple noses. There's not a lot of detail, but there is a lot of color. So bodies are just simple. We've got, you know, we're not looking at pointy elbows or very specific hands, just some fingers some very simple shapes, lots of color. So that's what we're gonna go for when we create our bus and our people today. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our bus. And you can see, let me see if I can pull this apart. I have it all glued down together. But you can see we're gonna do this in a few different pieces. Oh, this, there we go. We're gonna first create our bus, the inside of our bus. We're gonna create the passengers on our bus. And you can make as many as you want. And then we're gonna create the outside scene outside of the window. And you can choose to glue those down or not. And we're gonna use a fun technique today. If you have a baby wipe, I'll show you the technique so we can kind of practice for a minute. We're going to create paint with our markers. So this part of my paper is covered up, but I just wanna show you what happens if I draw a square in red there, and then I take just a little bit of my baby wipe, and I do like that, it turns the, the marker into paint. The cool thing about that is then I could go back and I could still draw on top of it, and I can keep doing it again and again, layering different amounts of marker to get some really neat effects. So keep that in the back of your mind because that's how we're going to create a lot of, that's how we're gonna do our bus, that's how we're gonna do our clothing, that's how we're gonna fill in and make it look like we used watercolors when all we did was use marker and either baby wipe or a very damp paper towel. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create our bus. I'm gonna keep this up here. And I'm gonna grab my journal, flip my page, and we're gonna be using two different pages here. And I'm gonna show you kind of a neat trick. We're gonna use our cutouts for our windows to create our passengers for our bus. So if you'll notice with me that our windows are just two rectangles with a divider in between. So you can take your pencil and you can draw two windows and we're going to just have it go off of the page. It's just a little bit easier so we don't have to try to cut a window all the way inside on our paper today. 
and they do not have to be the same size, but I'm gonna do mine about like that. You might decide you want them a little bit closer together. I could do like that. I'm gonna, it doesn't matter. We're using pencil here. And notice that I put my windows in the top half of my paper so they don't come all the way down. The windows in our book are really large and they cover up a lot of the, um, a, a lot of the scene. You could do that if you want, but I wanted a little space to anchor my people. So your windows could take up at least the top half if you wanted them to be a little bit bigger. They could be a little bit bigger like that. Whatever size you want your windows, we just want some space for the seats, place to put our people, and some space for what we're gonna see outside of the window. So go ahead and take a second, draw your window. Again, did I use a ruler? Did I measure? No, just did two rectangles, leaving that little space right there in between. You have your windows in there? Great. Now we're gonna cut our windows out. So whenever I cut, remember your thumb goes in the small hole, your fingers go in the big hole. We almost always cut away from our body and instead of turning the scissors, we turn our paper. So I'm gonna flip that up. Sometimes it's easy to, to open that all the way up like that so I don't end up cutting two pages. And I'm going to cut away from myself. Now it might be tempting to start cutting like this, but I really like to turn my paper so that my scissors are still going away from me. And I'm gonna turn my paper again. My scissors still going away from me. Boom, one window done. And I'm gonna set that aside. And look, now that I have this right here, I'm going to cut my window turning my paper, turning my paper, cutting away from me, and there we have it. That doesn't look very exciting, does it? Right now, I just have what looks like the gi a giant capital I, or even a giant letter H on its side. Now, what I want us to do I want you to go ahead and cut out your windows. And I want you to lay your journal. I'm gonna move the book out of the way now. I want you to lay your journal so that this is on your desk. We wanna be able to color the inside of our bus without getting it on the page behind us. And you can choose to color your bus interior, that means the inside of your bus, any way that you want. If I look at the illustration from the book, it's painted green. There's some darker green outlines around the lighter green interior. I think maybe on this one, yeah, I'll still do it green. You can choose whatever marker color you want. And if you have a baby wipe or a damp paper towel, what you can do is outline it and I always make a mess, you all know that. So I've got a little bit of marker already on my desk underneath. Good thing I got a baby wipe. If you wanna put a piece of scratch paper underneath yours so that doesn't happen, you can do that. But I'm coming up here and I just outlined it with marker and I'm gonna come back and see if I can make paint. Now, if you don't have a baby wipe, sometimes you have to kind of get a little bit extra there and then kind of wipe it in. You don't want to get it soaking. If your paper starts to get uh, bumpy or crumbly, that means that your paper towel is a little bit too wet. We don't want that to happen because then the paper will rip. Just barely damp, just gently rubbing to make some of that paint. And up here, I'm thinking, it's not rubbing very well, so I'm gonna just add a little bit more marker. But if you look at our inspiration picture, see how he used paint to get kind of that streaky look? Well, we can get that streaky look with baby wipes and markers.
part of being an artist is being an optimist. And that means finding surprisingly good things in places where you would not usually look. Now you can leave your bus like that. I might choose to add some of these little upside down views for the seats or some details around my windows. So I think I'm gonna go ahead now. Isn't that fun that you can go right on top? I'm just gonna draw some simple little seats. I've already got some interesting details around my windows. Nothing very fancy. And that is the inside of my bus. Now you can always just color it in with marker or you could color it in with crayon. I could even go back and now that I've got a little bit more marker on there, I could wipe it again, get just a little bit more color. You could even experiment with doing two colors. Let's do that together. Let's say I decided to go back and add a little bit of blue. on top of my seats. Now what happens? Ooh, look at that. You get a really neat look, don't you? There's so much experimenting that we could do with just markers and baby wipes. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Well, before we get too excited about the inside of our bus, let's go ahead and make some people. Now we have these pieces. They used to be windows, right? They just have my sketches on them right there. We're going to turn them into passengers. And these passengers do not have to be fancy. But what I do want them to do is to fill up this whole piece of paper. So you might decide, like we have CJ right here, that you're going to do a whole body. You might decide to do a shirt and pants and shoes and a head and arms, the whole thing. If you do that, you're gonna plan it out on your paper. You're gonna say, hmm, I'm gonna want the head here and a body here and some legs here and some arms there. I'm gonna fill it all the way up. But notice, the same size that is CJ's whole body is this lady with the butterflies from the top of her head about to her waist. We don't see the rest of her body and that's okay too. So maybe you wanna draw somebody where you just see the head and the upper body. Same with this guy, we only see his head and his body. So you get to choose whatever kind of characters you want to put in your bus. You could make yourself, you could make uh, your best friend or your grandma or your dog. We even have, we have a dog on the bus, don't we? The blind man's seeing eye dog. There he is. You could even make a dog, but I want you to make two characters for your bus that fill this up. And you can do this a couple of different ways. You can draw it right on that with pencil and then color in with marker, or you can just go, go for it straight with marker. You're welcome to color them in any way you want. You can use the baby wipe to create different parts of the clothing, or you can just use straight marker or you could pull out crayons or colored pencils or whatever else you have. But notice that our illustrator used bright, bold colors, some interesting details, maybe some stripes, maybe some patterns or designs, and very simple faces. I'm gonna go ahead and create a couple of characters for this bus ride, and then while you create your characters. Let's draw together. I'm gonna pause right there and show you, I got way out of the lines, right? But it's okay, because I'm gonna cut my character out of this piece of paper. So anytime we get out of the lines, it doesn't matter. I could go back and redraw that line and it will be just fine. Hmm, well I got a little bit of marker there, so guess what? We're gonna add a beard. There we go. All right, draw along with me.
created two characters for the bus, and now I gotta cut them out. So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before, holding my scissors away from me, turning my paper as I go. Doesn't have to be perfect, just cutting around my paper and see how I'm even leaving a little bit of space on the outside. You can totally do that. You don't have to cut right on the line. That's really up to you. This is your art project and however you want to cut it out. If you want to cut it right on the line, you can. If you want to cut it with a little bit of white space around it, that's perfectly fine. But go ahead and cut yours out while I'm cutting mine out. I've just set my characters in uh, my bus and you might even be imagining like who these people are and what good is in them. Maybe one of them is a storyteller or one of them has a really great laugh or one of them loves to sing. That's up to you. You get to write your own story. I'm going to set my characters aside and focus on what's outside the window now. You remember how Nana helped CJ see beauty in a place that other people might not see it. And so we're gonna create a scene outside of our window. This is a lot of art today, isn't it? The best way to do that is to keep your bust like this and just lightly with your pencil, trace the inside of your window. That way, when we open it up, you know that your scene has to fill up those two spots. And here's where you get to create your own I'm gonna do this just a little bit darker so you can see it. Yours doesn't need to be dark, but I just want the camera to catch that. This is where you get to create whatever kind of background you want. What would you wanna see outside of your bus? Now you might choose to create a beautiful landscape or maybe your best friend's house, or maybe you're seeing the ocean outside of the window. Remember that this is what your characters are going to see when they look out. So on this one, you'll notice that I did some buildings, I did some fence, I did a big brick wall. You can do whatever you want. You get to create the scene outside of your window. And is this something that we would usually say, oh, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen? Maybe not, but my characters on the bus sure thought it was beautiful. So go ahead and create whatever kind of background you want to make using some of our same techniques. I'll show you how I made a how I made that brick because that's kind of a fun thing to do. Let's say I'm going to make a brick building. Now I'm going to have it go even beyond my window here to make my brick building or a brick wall. All I did was make some dashes, and bricks are usually stacked, so they're not right on top of each other, but they alternate. So if I do this, and notice there's a pattern here, right? Three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two. Then when I take my wipe over the top of it, it makes that nice little subtle brick pattern. Now here's the difference if we use our baby wipes. On this part, we won't be cutting this out. It will be covered. So when I make that kind of, if I were to drag that all the way down, that wouldn't matter because that part would be covered up. But it's just something to think about as you're creating. All right, go ahead and make a scene outside of your window. Maybe you're gonna have the rainbow that Nana saw or maybe some really pretty trees or maybe just buildings with graffiti. Whatever you want to create outside of your window, I want you to make a scene that you'd like to see while riding on your bus.
right, so there's my background. And look, you can see it from the inside of my bus. And then I'm gonna put my passengers in the bus to enjoy the view. Our last step will just be to glue everything down. And you can choose how you wanna do this. I'm gonna just glue my passengers to the seat part. So I'm just gonna put some glue on their bodies Stick them right so that their bodies are flush against the bottom there. You can choose to glue your bus front down to your background. It's really up to you, but I'm gonna just do mine like that. And there we go. I have created my bus scene and I can only imagine the conversation that these two are having as they drive by and find beauty in unexpected places. Well, I hope you find beauty in unexpected places too, because I think you're probably a full class of optimists. Maybe that unexpected place was in your art journal. I hope you surprised yourself by trying a new technique, by creating some fun characters, and by imagining their journey on the bus through town. Maybe you'll ride a bus this week, or maybe hop in the car with a parent or a grandparent. And I hope you look out the window and find something to be optimistic about. Well, I tell you what, that being with you all every week is a place of optimism in my life. I sure love getting to be with you as we draw together, even when we're apart. <laughs>